Go ahead and get started. So the next speaker, we have Shipratap Singh um, from CVS Caremark. Um, take it away. <laughs> Hello. Hey, guys. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Shiv. So trying to take about like one of the particular process, uh, we guys talk about AI, ML, machine learning, data translations, data analytics, a lot of things. Uh, yes, those in generic has been implemented at a lot of places. Uh, I just take it an opportunity to show a real-time uh, use case where you, we guys are struggling with. So I'm just a uh, forward, quick intro. I have been like uh, working with a couple of analytics, face recognition, pattern recognition, IoT devices integration in the past. Uh, being with the CVS from the past six years, I am working in the infrastructure, performance engineering, scalability analysis, working with the data analytics, data scientists, machine learning, and all that stuff. So that's just a quick background trying to dive into what we do. So this is as a CVS. Uh, yes, pharmacy is our one phase, but we start looking into the diverse era. Like we guys are Omnicare, home nursing, pharmacy specialist um, in the Medicare services, insurance business, and also providing um, kind of retail services as well. So we are managing multiple platforms, data analytics, data platform, business platform, engagement platform. And in this, I would say, fourth wave of AI, we are trying to integrate and focus on the local healthcare, a predictive healthcare, which actually will tie it to that. Yes, there is always a way. The patients are coming to the pharmacy. You give them medicines. They are feeling sick, and you, they went to the doctor, OK? The next era is something where we are dealing with this lot of data, looking into the reasons, kind of practices you guys are dealing, what kind of drugs has been delivered in the past. You can actually look into the predictive analytics and focus on, OK, A kind, B kind, C kind, like pupil are dealing with those kind of specific drugs may fall into those side effects. And that's why they should either focus on their nutrition activities, changing their diet activities, and all that stuff, which can probably dive into the predictive analytics and, and healthcare. So with all these things, uh, just trying to narrate a story like, uh, so I have been like a couple of times on the pharmacy with our pharmacist. Being over there, uh, there is a couple over there, they, they just came, they were trying to explain their issues, definitely. They were, uh, just to be specific, yeah, there is no, I am, I am just not leaking out any, any data over here, but yeah, that was a French couple that came over there. And those guys were, were trying, like, really trying to do their conversation, trying to explain their questions to the pharmacist from the pharmacy, kind of a struggling. So yes, this is a new era. There are a couple of handling apps coming up. You just open a Google Translator. The pharmacist was quite good. He just, can you speak again? And he just look at it, convert into a French, and he responded back, like the approach. But to dealing with the same things, like five years back, uh, federal law itself bring a law that all the pharmacies should be capable enough to deliver at least your labels on the Rx, at least in 32 different languages. Uh, pretty good. Yeah, it's a good thing. Now we can support all our customers. People can understand the one of the very critical aspects, because those labels carry your drug information. They carry about the guidelines, what you have to do. They carry about your doses information, how do you have to take it, You about the side effects, all those stuffs in place. So yes, it is critical. So we just look into those avenues, I would say, like. Eight years back, starting like 2012, that's where we start looking into what we can do. It was a kind of mandate coming on board, and should we improve it? AI, machine learning? Back like 2010 or 11, a uh, little bit tricky. We went back to our teams and said, so we'd like to implement AI. So you want to deliver it in 2020? We would be out of business. OK. So you start looking into different avenues, what we can do further. Uh, so we take a kind of predictive approach at that time, and that's what I would say as this process flow. So there is an Oracle BI advanced analytics tool available. Uh, they provide you the Unicode conversion. You can save your data the way you want. You do have the swing formatter over there. Uh, using the swing formatter, you can retrieve the data using the API calls onto the Oracle. You have like, because whatever has been delivered, these guidelines, um, medication and doses, we know actually the text in advance what it has to be. So we start going on a marathon journey of converting those into the different language set, meaning like syntactical data and lexicon from the dictionary, start saving into the database. 
And then we do have the predefined templates that has been provided by the federal law. So first we will try to do the PDF converter uh, that can provide you like kind of in all different languages. So we tried to do that. We hit an issue that it was, it required a, a duplex printing on the Jabra printers which are there in the pharmacies. And the PDF cannot provide you the duplex printing. So okay, look into the different issues. So we went and switched over to the PS, uh, your PostScript formatter. And that has a much broader coverage of the languages. It covered like 100 plus language, as well as provide you the dual printing option and all that. So we guys go ahead, implied that, and kind of able to do it successfully. So yes, it's a story from long back 2012, where we were able to provide all those kind of formats, multi-level printing to the users. Um, cutting the longest story short, we start keep on going with these approaches. And as the data like keep on growing, on the top of that, we get these updates from the federal like uh, every quarterly that, okay, you need to change and update a uh, couple of guidelines. You need to change the drug uh, doses and, and all that stuff. So as these things came up, it would be a kind of project for our team. Because every time new dimensions came up, the team actually has to spin up a project because we are saving all this data into the database. There are no real-time translation happening. So we get those specs in. We again work with the syntactic dictionary, their semantics and all that, convert the data, save it to the Oracle database, update the templates, which was the PS scripters, like PostScript, made them according to the federal laws, and then repurpose. OK, guys, now you are good to go. So every time, kind of, we have to spin up our project. And that's where we say problem statement and the challenges. Um, this is a kind of sample uh, formatted, like raw, raw, raw data set. It is nothing to relate it to a patient. So that's a, a kind of labels has to generate it. It's much more deep dive where you have to start putting into the details on the back of like what are the doses conditions, uh, what could be the side effect. So there is there is a flip side of that. So the couple of challenges that we start facing uh, with the growth and the awareness, we start seeing like especially on the California side, we start seeing this demand get increasing, and there's a probably like a starting from the 30 prescriptions per hour, we might need to see like about 72 prescriptions per hour for the multilingual itself in, in some scenarios. Though definitely it, it, it varies by the state. So that was a kind of start bringing us a challenge, looking into the new venues, new alternatives, what we can provide. Because yes, that approach was working, absolutely working. Can an approach be good for the future uh, when we are in fourth wave of AI, there are so many ML, machine learning, syntactic language transformation, bilingual transformations are available. There should be a way that we can do the online segmentation analysis, can generate, like if we do have the English AI classifier in place, it should be able to convert that data into the other languages on the fly. So right now we are giving the stories, uh, because yes, we are saving the data in each and every language into our database. We are doing the computing power in the runtime, and API has to be go into the database. Uh, we have to run the parsers at the back end in the stores itself. It is using the computing power, where we have to run those post script transform the data, put it into the format that is being required and federated by the law. And that's where your label is get generated. So looking into the further solutions, like uh, the application should be able to import the multilingual text uh, into the database. That was one of the federal condition. Uh, existing approach each time generating and updating the template language, as we were just discussing, that was incurring a lot of time over there. And one of our requirement was to reduce the response time for each and every fill so that we can increase our throughput and improve the overall uh, the TPS for delivering those multilingual RXs. So a couple of options. Looking into the proposed approaches to optimize the label printing uh, based upon some of the new technologies available. So yes, creative ideas, thoughts, process. Any new problem when you start looking into, you start diving into the multiple options, you start hitting into the pros and cons, what you can do, what you can't do. So same was the case of us. We start looking into the multiple uh, I would say new avenues available, right? So one of our approach that we went back to Oracle, we were using them. They came back with an open option in place. Guys, you can upgrade your whole suite with the Oracle Data BI Analytics. You should be good to go. Uh, we will just ask you to spend $2 million and not more. We will upgrade your whole platform, and you would be good to go. End to end, it would be Oracle. We can reduce your response time. We can reduce your overall uh, like analytics and, and, and the processing. And uh, if you integrate with the BI, we can prefetch, put them in the cache, and can provide you your parsers or, or, or your template upfront. Good option. Uh, another option, we can upgrade the platform with a multilingual word 
embedding Oracle package. So that's something being introduced from the Oracle as well. So nowadays, every cloud services are providing their own multilingual transformation packages. Same way, Oracle BI has also advanced, and they are also providing one new multilingual class classifier that could be used, like you can embed it as a widget. So you all might have heard about the Google widget, the Google Translator, which has right now being deprecated. So same way, Oracle does have their own uh, widget kind of stuff. They say, OK, include it as a library or a jar or something in your code, and you can start doing like some kind of translations, what you guys required. Uh, another option we do have in place, refactor your existing application. Like uh, It's a new era of microservices. So why you want to run the old monolithic way, move everything into the cloud, start running the microservices, break down your services instead of one end-to-end -end service into different microservices, like one can just send a request, one can generate a script, one can do your lexical converter for you and translate the language and move everything to cloud. Okay, that sounds a, a good thing to go. And these are still like all the brainstorming option. Uh, then we work around under more research, see uh, one of the paper from the Google that they are recently throwing in. They are moving there from SMT, that is your statical machine translation to the NMT, uh, the neural network based translation. So we start seeing the accuracy over there, that's pretty good, and those guys were using uh, word to vec I'm pretty sure most of the folks, if you guys are dealt with machine learning, would have gone through their packages. So that's where uh, this new approach was coming from. And the final that would be keep on the list is uh, there's a recent research from the Facebook that these guys have started using the multilingual uh, transformation. Think of the Facebook where these guys, you just go over there, type one of the word over there, uh, events, and it will automatically show you near me. Uh, actually, what's happening? It's actually generating your, your context, not exactly translation. So that's what the classifiers does, that when you're passing your one word, um, I love my cat. Okay, so when you start passing it through that translator, it will actually start mapping your words in terms of the context and not exactly the meaning that, okay, the cat can go with love, I can go with love, or I love my cat, so something like, uh, I like to paint my desk dash. You pass it on through a classifier on the Facebook, like uh, through, what we, through the vector generation, or through like the Facebook were using the different libraries, they are called Muse, and I know that is called the fast text. That's what they were using. So it will automatically provide you the suggestion. It will show you the list of colors, whatever you have in your training algorithm. I want to paint my desk blue, red, green. So when we just run the training model, it will start like giving us whatever we do have in our training data, like 100 different colors. What to do with that? I just want to say, I want to paint my desk today. I don't want to put it on a color. So. Yes, still there is an ambiguity about the words. So that's where the another challenge came up, that it's not just a context. You need to understand while we are delivering or creating the transformation, a composition as well, that the different context may lead to a different state or the thought process. It's, it depends, right, where you are going. So that's why like there are three different stages when you mostly deal with the syntactic or the multilingual transposition, you should be understand about the context. There should be a way that we should be able to figure out like the same words within different languages should, should lie into the one space. So kind of currently what we are doing, like if there is an English language coming up and there um, I have to put it into the Korean, then there is a kind of always a translator that is required. So let's say I do have Chinese, I want to convert into the Korean, then the Chinese will first be converted in, into the English, and then the English translation will again convert into Korean. So kind of technically you are doing three hops. Uh, you are doing like, why can't I convert directly from Korean into the Chinese? Or another big question, is it always required to be the translation? There could be a chance, so the quick example, like uh, we call football as, like we, 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 we call it as, as soccer in English, you call it football in Turkish, and the same word is, is called it like a uh, fall in French. So there are like, these are three different semantics, three different words, but actually they are transcribed to the same meaning. So they all, if you just really go to the vector space generation, uh, I do not like to, do not want <laughs> to jump into the mathematics, but they will kind of generating the same weight over there. So it means if you really start using that vector space generation mechanics, all words having the same meaning will actually fall into the same space. 
and then instead of going actually into the translation, you can go to the classification. Okay, I am going into the category of sports, that to, I am going to the winter sports, that to probably to be a skiing, and in that I am going over to a particular place, segmentation. So all these four different words make a sense to a particular zone, and if you go through the classifier, like the text classifier through Facebook, it will put them into one space. So next time what it would happen, like if you start running the same thing, instead of doing the actual translation, uh, hypothetically there would be one classifier would be for each of the languages. So you can generate a classifier for Turkish, Korean, Chinese, French. Pardon me, guys. So that way, once you have the classifier, now if your text will come, you do not have to convert it into another language. The classifier will actually understand, like you can tie one of the identity uh, a underscore E and B underscore French, which is mean like your coder decoder in between will understand that you want to convert from English to French. Instead of now do the conversion, what it will do, it will ask the coder B, basically there's a concept of uh, coder decoder. So I'm just going to the other way guys, uh, just ran ahead. So these are like uh, the competitive advantages, disadvantages, pros and cons of the same options that we are discussing. I haven't gone into the detail, but kind of yes, we brainstorming all those four options put them side by side, what it could lead to. There is a financial impact as well for the same kind of not disclosed proprietaries. <laughs> so, but yes, there are those kind of impact. I'm putting here purely technical things that A can do this, B can do this. Those are the advantages, this are the advantages or disadvantages. Based on all the advantages, disadvantages over here, we actually finalize um, the last two, which is your word to back and fast text. And this is in corresponding to your future initiative. How is the future landscape look like? Yes, uh, I'm good to go with Oracle Advanced Analytics or BI, I can upgrade my platform, but what after next two years? So kind of looking into the future, growth, volume, scalability, availability, and our business horizons that are increasing, we just nailed down the last two, okay, let us start doing the POCs on these guys. So that's what I was talking about. Uh, the Google really made uh, a good progress after which now they are even deprecating their existing Google widget which earlier used to be the translator. It was good, but there was no intelligency in it. It, it, it sometimes lead to unpredictable results, like one you were seeing earlier. So that's where this NMT came up, where they were actually marking their SMT, which was a statistical machine translation, and replacing it with the neural machine translation. What neural machine translation can do, like why I want to go with it, I am already running with SMT. So you go somewhere, sir, we can apply this. Uh, I am already running, why I want to use this one? Okay, look, so I just put up a language to them, put up a sentence, and that's what I think in, in Amazon, just five minutes back, you guys were seeing an example where it just completely disrupt the world children. So that would be the kind of things happen uh, with the SMT because it was not a context driven, it was not a scope driven factor, it was just purely word translation. So I can put any word within a sentence, it doesn't care, it will purely convert the word. It does not even think of that how this word coming in this sentence make a sense. So that's where this, this was, a, I would say, like a, a breakthrough with the Google after that they start hosting their APIs and their current translation APIs are actually all deal with the neural translator. That's why in the past two years, I think they have the maximum presence right now in the market. They are covering 67% of the whole API, your, cloud that, that, is, that is going with the APIs and the conversions. So uh, just a, a little bit deep dive into what we guys were talking about, right? Um, just a few minutes back, like how it is different from the existing one. I am trying to say, uh, I have oversimplified it. Yes, it's not like I put the input, I got the output and things are done. So you, you just put up an input text. Yes, uh, like I want to train drug and I want to expect to go it with the doses, right? Most of the time in our, if I would say, the, 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 the labels that we are printing or those kind of scenario, these two words, 80% of the time goes together. Drug doses, five ML, three times by mouth. Pretty much good. But now there are two ways if I have to print it in Chinese, I can go to my database, go to the same way, or I could have a classifier in place. On my screen, the pharmacist can just transpose it instead of E and French, and the same label would be generated in French, instead of passing through the whole call again. How to do that? So what it is showing you on your um, right and left, guys, 
there is an input coming in. It would be the words that you are creating in your sentence. Encoder is actually trying to generate a context for that word when you're passing a sentence. Uh, drug row is three times five ml. So it actually will, will try to generate the context of one word to another. The middle layer that you are seeing, guys, this is uh, basically the neural network hidden layer. It actually generates the vector representation at the weight for your word compared to the neighbor words that is in the same space lying over there. And your decoder is at the end, is actually the one which is trying to generate or map this encoder word which is coming in to the other vector space that has been generated for the different word in the context of that. So another addition over there, So, but, but this ever process that has one flow that it was not uh, a recurrent feedback loop. And when I say recurrent feedback loop, it actually understands the word if I say, uh, you should take your doses three times a day. Three times a doses, three times a day doses you take. It doesn't make any sense to this sentence. And there are a couple of languages, uh, like Urdu is one, if I can give a, a, a lexical comparison, where it actually goes from left to right instead of going from right to left. So if you just start moving to those languages, completely screwed, like your, your even that translator or the classifier doesn't understand what's going on. So that's why they introduced another thing in place that is called your RNN, um, recurrent neural network uh, as encoder and decoder. This actually what it does that it will actually instead of one neuron will spin up multiple neurons at your input. So here it is your encoder, your hidden layer, your decoder. It will run a reverse chronology as well, decoder, hidden layer, encoder. So there is a two-way weights and the mapping that has been set up and generated. Now it understands the context in both ways corresponding to the words that what going on. So uh, this this is just a, I, I won't deep dive into the program like this was a quick program that we put together for the POC, and this is not going into the cloud. Yes, we start looking into our own convergence. That guys, we have an option in place. We probably can run a quick TensorFlow setup. So like the first part of this, if you guys are seeing, uh, this is just a, I'm importing a couple of TensorFlow libraries, set up my own vocab size, or maybe okay, like 40,000 words or something. <clears throat> because you, you, you need a data trainer to understand the context and all that. Uh, provided a couple of uh, data utils like uh, which I have to grab him, and then I create my two of the neurons that is like encoder input and decoder inputs. So this will lead to the next is like initiate the encoder and the decoder inputs with a 32-bit uh, TF placeholders. And the last side, uh, basically, on the other side of that, which I think that the, the train model, uh, after including all those, definitely it, it doesn't include the RNN or the neural network. It was like purely um, word to vec trans TensorFlow library that we are using. So it able to provide the results. Yes, pretty good. Using the classifier, we were able to convert the overall sentences and the bilingual things that we are running. So English to French, French to Korean, all those we were able to do, but it need way more coding. Like we guys just like code, I think like four plus five weeks just to transpose the language conversion for one thing. It is start using like 100 virtual GPUs at the end of the day while we start running our training model. And we ran almost like 24 by seven, seven days to get our first set of classifier just for the English. So we just start extrapolating that, okay, there are 32 languages, and if we start generating classifier for each, and even that need to be updated, we will be able to launch our like updated program after a year. But yes, there were federal guidelines, there were laws, there were constraints that we have to deliver this next updated set within three months. So what to go, what to do, or what to go? Uh, looking into different options, and that's where cloud came handy. We guys start looking into the different options that's available with the, you do have, um, Azure services available with the GCP, we do have the translator. And absolutely, I just said, like, while comparing back with the market, we find like uh, Google definitely has the best one, which can provide you 95% accuracy. They, this this word to back, this also provide you like uh, basically two different models. Uh, one is called uh, through the n-gram approach, another is, is um, those are just like details over there. So <laughs> don't going over there, but yes, like one of the approach work for us, because the other approach with the word to back is not able to transpose or create a vector space for the rare words, which is actually when you dump into the medical world, most of the words doesn't make sense for the dictionaries. They just came out of the blue and 
according to computer, what is this? I don't know. Either you have to then teach your dictionary again, and then you have to flip back to your model, or you can take a bypass that, OK, just start looking which has the more exhaustive approaches. So that's why they do have those two models. Uh, this is just a detail of um, the, the initial implementation that we guys start putting to, through into. And then it is basically the, the transpose of the same which we are talking earlier, right? Um, there is an input, there is an output screen, and then there is a target. I was just explaining the context of one of this, like drug doses. So these two words kind of has to go together. So I have just like created one vector with like eight neurons. And when you say this vector weight is one, is actually being spe specified to the word drug. In between, there are your, on the hidden layer, there are your, your encoder and decoder, like W1 and W2. Like W1, you are providing an input. W2 will actually try to map the context with the doses. And in between, um, your output, um, on, 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 on the top of the output, we start using, there's another utility called the softmax. And what softmax can do, it can actually provide you more variable distribution across your word generation or the vector spaces. So it, it just do that. And then the target, which is um, basically the another context within the word. So drug, drug do doses, three ml, three times a day. So it, your target is actually trying to create a context with the word input that you're providing. And that's how the whole referent algorithm will work. Um, Yes, it is like pretty available on word to work when you guys start searching on. There is a lot of details over there, so I'm not going into the depth of how that algorithm will work, but this is specific to what we guys try to do. So while doing that, uh, one of the challenge we still face that we were still getting the accuracy of about like 90%, 95%. We are still seeing a couple of words being missing. And when you are coming to a specific to when you are writing that doses, drugs, and you are writing that what, what are the policies, what are the constraints, you can't take the chance of even missing one word because that can lead to a different meaning. So that, that's where we start looking into the different approaches, what is available. And that's what I was earlier bringing up, that there's a new research coming from the Facebook where they are talking about multilingual syntactic analysis, which is an expansion, or I would say hybrid to the word to work. So these guys introduce their own library that's called the fast text. Uh, which along with the context can also generate the meaningful comparison to the words itself. That okay, what you are putting is in the context of the medical science. Does medical science, this word make sense when you're putting it in this sentence? And it, it, it also start creating the classifier, like will provide you an option where you can generate the classifier for the different languages. And based upon this classifier, the words with the same meaning will be put into one word space. The words with the other different meaning will put into one word space into the different languages. So technically, when your data is coming in and you choose from A to B, it's not a translation. It's actually a classifier, which is just, just changing the things. So what we did, uh, this is again just an insight into the language model, which is from the Facebook that you do have English data, French data. And this is how your multiple classifier, which will actually understand the different classifier and will turn your data from one to B. So this is our hybrid model, like finally what we end up producing. And it is a combination of what Facebook has done to have their lexicon meaning from the different words and what Google provide you from word to vec, where they provide you the context vector, that how one vector can be converted into the another. So the, instead of having just a one classifier, now there are different languages. Each language can have their own classifier. And in between, this is called our like central brain system. You can call it as CNS. It's embedding vector representation and multilingual classifier. It's generated for each languages. Like the example I was giving, uh, if you can take like, it's called as drug in English. It's called as Fermaco in Spanish. And it's it called as drugi in French. So all these three languages will go to the classifier. Each will generate their own weight, but they leg into the same category. That's where the multiple classifier, like this multilingual classifier, will put them in one space. Next time, if any of the word or context of the translation is coming referred to drug, instead of doing the translation, it's just it's a it's a kind of like pointing the relative. That in long back in the C, you guys used to do pointers. That uh, now the Java has put everything on the wrapper, so kind of we just scrapped it off. But that's how you can like point a particular location. That instead of doing this whole translation, just go over there and you know what you need to pick up from there. So. This thing really helped us a lot. We get uh, quite a good improvements. And like this is 
uh, vague info of one of the labels that I was talking about, guys. We have to put up the doges, label, drug fact, so it's not just one thing. Uh, it is a kind of like 150 bytes of code, uh, overall data size that you have to put on that label and everything. So while we start using it, uh, we build the multilegal classifier. We are actually able to print instead of 32 in an hour, we are able to make up to 78 an hour. It bring our response time like from earlier from 12 seconds, we are able to get it up to the three second. And the world to back skip gram, like that's what I was talking about, that there were two different approaches over there. And we find this one as a more efficient one because it can understand the real world. You can teach it for the real world. You do not have to change your whole dictionary. You can mark them as an exception. And then an, an exception neuron could be created in parallel to your classifier. So with this, guys, uh, I was looking forward to go into the demo. But uh, kind of we have proprietary data sets, and we cannot make it public. Uh, I'm just putting the data over here from the test that we ran. So this is when you say TPS, uh, basically it's your business transaction where we start with our old approach with running through the Oracle, getting the BI analytics, getting the data. Uh, there are two different pillars. One is showing you the red is actually showing you the response time, and the green is showing you the TPS, which is how many we are able to achieve. So when we start making the transition, the changes, moving from one approach to B, B to C, C to D, actually we hit a uh, like, lot of setbacks as well. Like sometime we were able to make the changes onto the TPS, but see the response time plot that goes to like 37 seconds. So actually from 13th Feb to 7th March, we were running with the approaches of changing the swing, changing the Oracle BI analytics. Then on the March, we just flip over to the Google world to work approach where we hit like our TPS like, like going to start high. We did some tuning. Um, the team really came handy. Uh, so we able to hit our like first time the TPS crossing the 50 in an hour. We're able to reduce our response time from 12 second to six second, and then we apply the RNN into the Google solution. We were able to achieve our TPS to 64 with an accuracy of 95% and able to reduce the response time to 3.7 second. Finally, we put up a hybrid model with the Facebook Muse library and fast tech integrated with the Google world to back, and we were able to achieve like 82 TPS and 3.5 second response time, and I have the capability now to serve almost like 82 patients with a multilingual generation label in an hour. So that increase our throughput, that is definitely able to impact our finances, and overall it's an addition, value addition to the patient like who earlier required a multilingual Rx. Sometimes they just move off saying, oh man, we have to wait for like half an hour. Give me in English, I'm good. So now we are able to provide them from the queue within like five minutes, guys, you are good to go. You can pick up your Rx right now within the store, just wait for five minutes. Thank you guys, I'm open for the questions. <laughs> yes, sir. Absolutely. What you hit is, yes, that's what we did now to start with. That whatever the data has been provided to us, as of now, that has only been provided to the training models, and that's why we are getting the much more accurate result. Objective, going ahead, we are looking forward to implement, and I would say, extend this same thing for the other very criteria, like we are building our chatbots, we are passing on more options to the user that you can go online, look in their options, their data, their claims, so that's why we are looking forward to extend it. But yeah, good question. <laughs> you just guess the thing that yes, uh, just for a static data, if you want to apply a real world condition, it doesn't make much of a sense. But that's what I started with, that looking into the future, five years down the line, what would be the landscape would be? Now we have a platform in place, we have algorithms in place, we have a process, so we can achieve and provide much more benefits to the user. I think we are good.